Voulez-vous? The latest, and I think best album we've heard yet from ABBA. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, you very you. much, and it's good music on it. Interestingly, it's a sort of disco funk sound on that title track, Beyond, and um, in a way it sums up the album. It's a, a new move for the group, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what we feel ourselves. You recorded the tracks, or part of that backing track, in Miami. That's right. Benny and I, we were in the Bahamas at the moment, writing. Uh, we had hired a house down there. And we had written Voulez-vous, and we thought it was the perfect track to be recorded in Miami. So we called uh, Jerry Greenberg of Atlantic Records, and he set up the session for us. Benny, who did he get to play on it? Well, there's a group called Foxy. They had recently a big hit in America. They were all in, and some additional musicians. And we had help from uh, Tom Dowd and the Albert Brothers. George Terry, who is... George uh, Terry was with, yeah, with Larry Clapp. And a fascinating sound they got together, too. You must have been very pleased with that sound. Yeah, but we took the backing track back to Stockholm, and we've been working with it up here, doing a lot of overdubbings and all the vocals and all that. But it still is a great backing track. Yeah, you had to go a long way to beat the sort of funkiness of the genuine American studio sound, don't you? Well... You're going well, a long way to try to do it. I mean, it's the musicians and the tradition they have. Tom Dowd, as a producer, is an amazing man. Works, of course, with people like Rod Stewart. Yeah, that's right. But he, he was in just to help us, you know, because we have never been to America recording before. And he, I guess he's a good friend with Jerry and all that. And the reason for us being on the Bahamas to start with was that we've been writing for maybe one year and a half for this album. And we felt a bit stuck. So we said maybe we should go away for a couple of weeks and see what comes out of it. Well, I think a lot of impressive music, as we'll be hearing in the future, has come out of it. We can't not talk to the ladies. Great sounds of disco on this album. Do you two really get into disco nowadays, Agnetha? Yeah, I love it, really. It's good to dance to, but what's mm. it like to actually sing disco? Well, it seems all right for me. It's very good to try new things. And we really felt fine in the studio when we did it. So. Good. Frida, did you enjoy doing the album as a whole? Was it a fun experience getting yes. together? Yeah, I think it was the best one we have done so far. Interesting thing about the next track we're going to play, the one we must talk to you about this, Does Your Mother Know, is that yeah. you're on the lead vocal. Yeah, this was day. Uh, <laughs> but it seemed to be a good song for me. Not many are, but this one seemed to be. Well, I really got a kick out of singing. Let's have a listen to it. Yeah. That's some, Word. <laughs> some interesting backing vocals there. I mean, the girls are sounding slightly um, sped up in the background there. But we are not. No. Really? No. no. They can sound like anything, I tell you that. That's amazing. So, we were talking just before the track about how and why you decided to do the lead vocals. I mean, you're not a stranger to singing, but you just don't do an awful lot of it at the moment, do you? No, but obviously. I mean, the girls are much better singers than I am. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but as, I mean, this number doesn't contain any long notes or anything like that, so it uh, was suitable for me. You know, when we recorded the backing track, the girls, you, they're usually there to sing the vocals, so we know what key to record it and all that. But they weren't there at the time, so Bjorn was singing. And it sounded all right, so we said, let's record it in this key. No, obviously, I mean, if you listen to the lyric, the girls couldn't sing it. Yes, it would have been a little difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Is this going to be the start of a new trend then, Bjorn? Do you want to spread the vocals around a little bit? No, we take it as it comes. If there are numbers that are good for me on the next album, okay, I'll sing them. I'll be happy to. Well, later I'd like to talk a bit more about the songwriting side, but first of all, let's hear one of your best-known, best number one sounds from 1976. It's Dancing Queen. Proves that you've always been into dancing, that it's not a new move. Forever. Oh, no, no, that's... I must admit, you know, as a listener, I'm amazed at the number of people who are making these disco records. I mean, Paul McCartney has just made a very successful mm. disco sound. As we say, Voulez-vous, Voulez, the title track, is undoubtedly a disco sound. Yeah. How long can disco continue like this? Well, I Forever. think with... Yeah. As long as people like to dance. And with mm. people like Paul McCartney, Rod Stewart, the Bee Gees, Stones going into it, I mean, talent going into disco develop and it will get better and better. Talking of Paul McCartney, as we just were, I gather, Benny, that uh, you are quite an admirer of his work and indeed got together with Paul recently. Yeah, that's true. Frida and I have spent uh, 10 days on Barbados. On Barbados. Mm -hmm. And he was there with, with Linda and their family. Great family. Did you get into a studio with him at all? No. no. Just met him and had a little chat. But I really admire what he's doing. I mean, keeping it all up for so many years. Nobody's done that. Before. Nobody's done it. And I don't think... Uh, Everybody realizes how really hard it is, how difficult it must be to stay where he is now for so many years. And not only maintain a, a sort of presence in the business, but to also be a step ahead of things. So yes, that's, that's kind of... Which is another trademark of ABBA. No soft soaping, but you do tend to set trends rather than follow them, which must be a little bit of a strain, I would have thought. Well, that's why it takes so long, because we like to record an album with ten singles. 
each individual song we like to treat as a single, and which means that we have to put down a lot of work and we maybe throw a lot of material away, and it takes time. But uh, we'd rather do that than have a bad album coming out every now and then. The use of strings on this album, it strikes me, although you've had strings before, that you've gone much more in for the string sound on this LP. Oh, I don't know. I haven't noticed that myself. No. You might think so because it starts off with this Mozart thing well, on As Good As New. Perhaps that's why. Yeah. It's not more than usual, is it? I don't think we, so. We've used the synthesizers also, but we still do it on this one. I mean, just change of sound and also maybe the different tunes. You add on what you want to add on. That's it. Well, let's have an example of that Mozart sound on the track that opens the LP, As Good As New. Anna, I'm going to call you that, which <laughs> it comes out easier. Is that it that way. hard? It is terrible. I'm sorry about that. You're leading uh, the vocals on that one. Um, how do you decide who is going to do the lead vocals on any particular song? We sing it both, and if one feels for it, then you can sing it. I mean, there's no height between us. Yeah, and also, you know, most of the songs, any of them could sing, which means that if Frida's done or Annette's done two numbers already on the album, Annette could take the other two. Yes, you have to share it's it as simple as that, really. Yeah. When you're writing a song and getting the things together, there, there are many different ways that people seem to write songs. They either come in nine to five and hammer out the hits, or they go into isolation like the artists. Which way do you two like to, to get a song together? We normally work sort of nine to five and very concentrated. But as I said earlier, that we've been writing a lot in the past one and a half years. And uh, we felt we had to do something about it, sort of come out of the deep depression. <laughs> so we, yeah. <laughs> no, but really, so we just went away and we, when we sit down, we just sit there and we play around with the guitar and the piano. So we hear something that we haven't heard before that we like. Mm -hmm. And we keep it and we start from that. But it seems to be good with a certain degree of isolation. Not complete isolation, but a bit. I mean, we go away and we can work until 2 or 3 o'clock at night and we can sleep for as long as we want the day after. I think everybody's got that image out of the movie of you sitting in this isolated hut on an island. <laughs> yeah, it is important. It is. And that's the way you like to do it. Yeah. yeah. You were talking a bit about the pressure or whatever you maybe felt. Do you feel that you are under pressure very heavily to produce hit after hit? After? Does it get more difficult as time goes by? You have to have impulses all yeah. the time. And so we, we did have impulses in the Bahamas because we could listen to the radio all the time with all the new good stuff coming out. Soak it all in. Yeah. yeah. What was the advice behind Lovers Live a Little Longer? <laughs> well, yeah. that's one of the first songs we wrote, actually, on this album. I don't, I don't know about the, the music, but about the lyric. I read in a paper that lovers actually live a little longer. <laughs> so I thought it was a good thing. I wonder if we can move on very quickly, in fact, to the success, the great success story of Chikatita, which as well as being a number two hit in Britain, Reader, mm -hmm. has now proved to be your biggest success in Spanish-speaking territories. <laughs> There's a wee bit of a story behind how and why that happened, isn't there? You are speaking about the Spanish version. Well, this is what I wanted you to yeah. tell me about. Yes. We felt that it would be nice to do it in Spanish because it's uh, very much a Spanish song. I mean, in the sort of style. Sort of reminiscent of yeah. Fernando as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is in a way. So uh, we called a Spanish teacher to teach us how to pronounce the words and the lyrics in Spanish and worked uh, together with her for a couple of hours. And then we went to the studio and she was sitting there with us and listening and uh, corrected us if there was something that was wrong. And uh, I think we, but it wasn't, no, it yeah. wasn't. <laughs> I think uh, it went out very well. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it's gone down it's pretty the, well. It's the first time that they worked on their own completely. Yeah. Benny Bjorn wasn't in the studio at all. Really? So you just put that together on your own? Yeah. And as we were saying, a song for UNICEF, which is a fascinating charity venture where songwriters have literally donated all their royalties to yeah. the charity. How yeah. did you get involved in that, Bjorn? Well, I think it originally came from, the idea came from the Bee Gees and Robert Stigwood, and they contacted us through some American lawyer, and we thought it was a great idea, and they put down a lot of work into that to make it happen, you know, which is very difficult with so many big acts, and uh, we sort of hope it could be a tradition, or it could be repeated, maybe in Europe. Well, it's a grand gesture, no matter what, and it's raised an awful lot of money, I gather. Yeah, it must have. It's a lot of money. Kisses of Fire is a, a good track off the album, the last one we're going to be able to have in this half of the program. I wonder if we can talk actually to Anna on this one, Agnetha. I keep trying. One day. <laughs> Funky styling again on this particular track. Was the, um, the backing track another one of these American ones, or is it a... No, it's only Voulez-vous that they did in Miami. So this is it's a Swedish one. Real funky, funky <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Are you not going to be making any more films, Frida? 
I think we are going to do a television film out of our next tour. But I don't know if it will be a full-length movie. I don't think so. I heard a rumor yeah. that you were actually involved in a film at yeah. the moment. <laughs> Go on, can you tell Star, us? It's a Swedish one. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Well, then, what's it all about, Frida? It sounds interesting. Well, it's a very little role, but I think it was very interesting because I liked the script. It's about two people getting divorced, and I am the wife, and the man is taking off with another woman to Argentina. And uh, we live down there in a house, and uh, my scene is uh, together with Lena Nyman, a very great actress here in Sweden. And we meet, and she's very sick. And uh, we have a nice little talk, you know, coming to know each other a little bit. That's why, uh, what it is about, actually. Frida, do you, intend really to do, do you intend to do some more acting in the future, then? If I get a good offer, why not? I mean, it's a nice thing to do. It's very funny, actually. What about uh, the sort of family life now in Abba? You, you're getting an awful lot of publicity on various lines, actually, of, of the family life. Has it in any way caused any problem professionally? You know, is it difficult at all? No, no it's not. It's not. It's, it's working out fine. It's better now. That's beyond that. That's it. Yeah, of course. Um, it, it, maybe the worst thing of all is the fact of all the publicity and the, the acres of newsprint and columns that have been... When you are a person that everybody knows, you have to take that. You know that they are going to write about it and you have to take it. Yeah. Well, so we don't look at the papers too much ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Great. Well, I, I know a lot of people are wishing you all the best, both personally and professionally together, and a lot of people are very pleased that the group hasn't been affected adversely. Benny and Frida, you've just... It was no secret that you, you have been together for a long time. Has it changed your lives, do you think, the fact that you're now married man and wife? Maybe, in a, in a way it has, yeah. But I couldn't tell what it is. I mean, you feel very comfortable and um, I like it, I must say. And I like the wedding. It was really nice, just the family, you know, the children and, and we. And I like, you know, the thing I like best is that there is still confusion. Who is married and who is not? I mean, that's, that's been the question of seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Still is. <laughs> <laughs> the most confusing group in the world, ABBA. Well, it's interesting, on the, the album, you've got a terrific variety of music. Yeah. And on I Have a Dream, Frida sings what to me sounds like quite a, a folky number, almost maybe going back to the roots, in a sense. What, what was the thinking behind this number? Is it an attempt to get back to the, the sort of Swedish folk sound or what? <laughs> Benny? Yeah, maybe it is a little folky, but I don't know from what country. <laughs> sort of, uh, it has a Spanish guitar, guitar, and it has a sort of a Greek rhythm. I don't know what it is. And the International School of Stockholm. Yes, yes that's yes, true. That's, we enjoy that very much. It makes me wonder whether you one day want to get out of this rock and pop field, because it is a very different sound for Abba Benny. Come on, give us some of the lowdown on the future of the writing team here. We never looked upon ourselves as rock composers or pop composers. I mean, we do whatever we feel like doing. Say, I mean, I have a dream. It has nothing to do with rock and roll. Neither have a thank you for the music or other songs we made. So, it, I mean, maybe in the future, we've been talking about it for many years now. When we have time, we might sit down and try to... I mean, a big concept together, maybe rock opera or music or whatever. But it takes, if it takes like a year to write an album, we might need maybe two years. But it, it's really a long project. And you are so we couldn't do it while we're working with ABBA. Yeah. Unless we involve ABBA in it, I mean, or the girls, or whatever. Do a sort of um, Tommy something. Like the, like the who? Yeah, yeah Tommy, you know, maybe. Maybe, do, you know, maybe that would be possible. But what I look forward to do is, I mean, to really put it up on stage, because I think that would be great to see it grow, you know, to see people being involved in all the different parts that everybody's doing. I right. think that's probably the ultimate thing in this business. Right. Fingers crossed for the future. I'm sure it'll happen one day. The album, of course, recorded in your own Polar Studios here in Stockholm. And that is a business venture that is really taking off for you, isn't it? I keep reading about people like Led Zeppelin in their recording, Genesis. True. Yes. Nice. How did it come up? You must be really amazed that it's working so well, Bjorn. Well, we knew from the beginning that we were going to build the best studio in Europe, you know. Well, one of the best, <laughs> anyway. And so we got the best equipment, we got the best of everything. So naturally it comes out well. We're looking around me at the moment, I see this lovely panoramic window and everything. Perhaps actually, Benny, you could describe it for the listeners at home who haven't got the benefit of seeing it. Well, I don't know if, how many of you listeners have seen an ordinary studio, but it's, normally you, you feel a bit locked in when you sit and when we sat down together with Michael Tretto our sound engineer and the people who were involved with building the studio we said we wanted a lot of space and we wanted a big panoramic window like a control tower you know on, on an airport 
the way to describe it. And it really does give a real open-air look. I mean, you've got this lovely sort of motif of clouds on the walls. That's well. right, that's on the left side. Yeah. And that, that's the big room with marble floor that we use for, for strings. Tremendous strings. Now. It's got an acoustic sound. In yes, it has. Yeah. And a big drum booth. The, on, the, on the right side with the space enough for two drummers if you want that. Well, we want to talk a bit about Michael Tretow now, actually, who is your engineer and maybe could be called the fifth member of ABBA, a very yes. important man in your setup. Indeed. He's been with us for more than 10 years before we formed ABBA. And Bjorn and I have always recorded with him, whatever we did earlier. Yeah, he's, he's so talented, you know, because he's he's got music within himself and he's, uh, he's always a step ahead of, of us. We never have to think about what sound we would like to create because he's already done it. He's got essentially more work. patience than anybody in the world. Oh, yes. <laughs> and if anything is needed in a recording studio, yeah. patience. Yeah, yeah that's right. true. I wonder if I can turn to the girls now who have been somewhat, you know, left out of it as we talk about all the engineering side. They're used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get all the shots on television, so you can't. Yeah, that's true. In fact, that sort of image... I want to talk about that. <laughs> Be quiet, Bjorn. The image of ABBA and the stunning image of the two of you together is, is really one, quite an amazing image. And how exactly does that image get together? Do you devise the costume? Costumes yourselves? What, Agnita? Well, of course, we have ideas of what we are going to have, and we also have two guys here in Stockholm that help us with suing them. What do you wear off, st off stage? I mean, at the moment, casual clothes. You're standing in radio one T-shirt, but I imagine yeah. that's not your usual garb. Oh yes, <laughs> always, always, always wearing these ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps I can ask you individually. What sort of thing do you go for, actually, Frida? What's your clothing style? I wear. What I think is comfortable, you know, and uh, I'm very much aware of fashion, so um, I'm very interested in it also, buying a lot of fashion uh, magazines yeah, now. That's why she's always out spending your money then, Penny. Mm. Oh, I have my own money. <laughs> We were talking just now about the, the visual side of ABBA, and it's been very important. The videos that you've done, the films that you've made for all your singles have been quite impressive. All the work of one man, I gather, Bjorn. Yes, most of it is him, I would say, 95%. Lasse Hallström. That's right. He also did the movie, yes. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Goodness. Yes, the one. Was that his first venture into the big screen? No, it uh, was Well, into Panavision, but not, was, not into yeah. full-length movies. He's, he's done that before. He's been famous in Sweden for a long time. And very talented, and he likes music very much, very much into pop and rock himself. You're always very, very careful about the way you choose the people to work with, aren't you? You know, you're, you're selective. You seem to have got a pretty good team around you to help sort of support the whole ABBA industry. Yeah, and very yeah. close friends, and I think that's very important. Yeah, that's right. How many people are actually in your offices? We were in your offices recently. It's a very small place. It doesn't no, seem... No, well, it's, there's a lot of people, you know, but at the moment, I don't know. No, but I think we're all together in the company like uh, 45. It's a small company and yet it's become the, the biggest exporter in Sweden. Do you like to get involved in the business side? We try to keep it separate but when there are big decisions to be made all four of us have to be there. But otherwise, I mean, we try to make, have it separate from creating the music. It's interesting that uh, when you're selling albums behind the Iron Curtain and you're not allowed to actually get any money out of them there, are you? You have to barter well, for, for your profits or something. Well, some of the countries pay in dollars but not very often, and they don't like to do it. <laughs> well, UK sales, thinking of success worldwide, I gather the record, Voulez Vous, has only been on sale for a day or so, and already it's passed the platinum mark in Britain, yeah. and has sold one and a half million pounds worth. Please. So well, that's the that's UK, I wonder what it's going to do worldwide. It must be very hard for you to grasp the yeah. volume of success. Yeah. So we don't even know how many records we've sold all together before this album. It's almost impossible. There's, there's one guy trying to find out right now. He's, intelligence all around the world. So I have to report on exactly how many records because it's just, just for fun. I heard word of something like a hundred million. Maybe it is. I mean, I don't know. It could be. Amazing figure, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I'd like to thank you all for talking to us today. Once again, the pressure of stardom is on you and people are demanding interviews and pictures. and things. What do you do to get away from it all? Bjorn, I mean, do you have any hobbies? Yeah, several. Such as? Like boating. Jogging, reading, and spending a lot of time with the children. I'm told a lot of things to do. Ice skating, you're pretty good at that, I'm told. Am I? <laughs> well, I didn't know. <laughs> well, at least you don't fall over. <laughs> no, I don't. No. I used to play in a hockey team when I was a boy. <laughs> All right, Frida, what do you like to do in your spare time? Oh, my hobby is music, and I'm taking dancing classes. That's also one of my hobbies. What sort of dancing is that? Sort of Saturday Jazz belly. No, jazz belly. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, and... Um, also taking singing lessons, both Agneta and me. 
Right. What else, Agnetha? I'm a jogger as well, and a swimmer. And, you know, we've got two small children, and that seems to take 90% of the time. Always do. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. And Benny? Well, my favorite hobby is, is the boat that we have for you tonight. But that's only during the summer, so. And in the winter? Well, uh, I play tennis twice a week. I do. That's not a hobby, that's just try to keep fit, which I'm not. And I do a lot of reading, like Frida, we read a lot. And uh, music also. All right, and I gather on the quiet, you're supporting Malmo in the uh, European Cup. Yes, I sure do. And I support Arsenal in the English Cup final as well. I think I'm going there. All right, good. All that in the future. I think also you're planning to, to go out live on tour soon. Perhaps mm -hmm. you can give us the lowdown yeah, on that. That's right. In the middle of September, we're going up to the dates in Canada, and then later on in the autumn. I don't know exactly when we we'll go to Europe. And yeah, middle of October, that is. Mm. Does that include Britain? Yes, Indeed, yeah. Course, yeah. We're going to be like a week in England. I don't know where we're playing, actually. We'll tell you. Plenty of ABBA in 1979. Well, you never know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sharing the music with us today on Radio 1. Thank you very much.